All right, hi everybody. This is Craig Lamparter again. Um, we're back here at the VHF desk today. Last time we were at the HF desk. Um, we're gonna. We had a lot of good questions about the, hooking up Raspberry Pis to radios and doing packet operations um, as as cheaply as possible. As you can tell, um, that we're just using an Android screen capture here to for the cheapest possible production, uh, so we can pass the savings on to you. Hopefully, this works. Um, there's probably a better way to do this. I'm sure someone will tell you tell me in the comments. So let's uh, let's continue our Raspberry Pi idea. Now, last time we were hooking Raspberry Pis up to an HF radio over USB. So all of the audio, the rig control, the push to talk, all of that was happening over a single USB cable. And that's really is the cleanest way to do it. So if you have like an all mode radio um, that has the USB sound built into the radio itself, it's really clean versus using like a signal link USB audio device, which gets kind of cumbersome with extra cables in the field and stuff. Um, so I kind of wanted to implement this on a VHF radio that didn't have uh, a USB sound card built into the radio. And then one way you can do that is to add a little sound card to your Raspberry Pi. So this is the Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, is this is going to focus or not. Um, Raspberry Pi Zero, about 25 bucks. And this is uh, the, the sound card that I will be using um, that I really like. I bought a bunch of these. In fact, buy a bunch. They're only like $14. This is an FE Pi. Uh, I, I want to call it Zero V2. Um, so it's actually the same uh, format is the pie. I mean, it, it just, it just smashes together. Right. And you can get that at fepi.com. And it really just implements uh, a line in line out and a headphone jack that we won't use. And it has a, a GPIO header that we're going to literally smash onto this raspberry Pi. So the FE Pi audio card, that's going to help us use a raspberry Pi as a packet radio to connect to a typical VHF radio, like an FTM 400 you see in the background. Um, there's also some additional electrical components you want to solder onto this guy. I actually have a schematic here. Uh, stand by for that. Um, you want to use this schematic. I mean, if you if you have no soldering skills at all, this probably isn't a project for you. If you have some soldering skills, uh, this is a project for you, and hopefully you'll have better skills uh, when we're done. Uh, the only tricky part thing that we have to add to this uh, FE Pi audio hat is uh, some end channel FETs. Actually, just one end channel FET. You see that in the upper right uh, with the source gate and drain there. Um, a couple of resistors, and if you want to get really fancy, you can have a little carrier detect diode that you see over there on the right. But this is the schematic, so you can pause this here. I don't know, print it somehow. Hopefully you can read it. But over on the left, you can see that we have the radio outputs and inputs. We have push to talk, radio in, ground, and uh, radio out. Uh, that's really all you need from the radio. At the very bottom, you see the Raspberry Pi Zero. And the, the, the two boards you see there are the actual top and bottom of the FE Pi. So you do have to solder a couple of wires onto the GPIO headers of the FE Pi. Uh, you don't have to solder onto the Raspberry Pi at all. You know, that one's a little expensive, and that, that's almost $25, right? You don't want to risk uh, screwing that up. But the FE Pi audio cards are pretty cheap. You can solder onto those, screw them up, um, you know, get, get a handful of them. You know, they're cheap. Uh, and, and let's see, you know, the resistor or cost almost nothing. You know, you get everything on uh, on eBay or what have you. So that's the schematic. Um, just for completeness, this these are the the end, the FET that you will need. I don't even think you can buy one. You got to buy a bunch of them. So this is a, a 2N7000 in-channel FET. This is the switch for push to talk. It's kind of, that's the magical part that makes your radio start transmitting, right? The FET. Um, and of course, diodes, you know, you can get bazillions of them pick a color that you like um what else and resistors i'm i don't hopefully i don't have to explain how to, to procure re resistors um you'll also need some of these uh, I, i'm using rj12 as a the radio connector cable um I, I kind of eviscerated the usb cable that came with the ftm 400 and acquired the pins for radio in out push to talk and ground um, so this is just a keystone jack that i kind of smashed those wires into and we're going to be using the ftm 400 behind us um, so when all is said and done, you take your FE card after it's all soldered together, and it should look a lot like this. Only I'm sure if you do it, it'll be a lot neater. So right here we have the uh, the FET for the push to talk switching. There's a diode in there, or I'm sorry, a resistor in there, and then right here there's a little LED for carrier detect. And that's that's optional. That's just to make it so it blinks, you know, when it's receiving packets. It's kind of cool anyway. Um, this RF choke is in fact necessary, especially if you hook this up to an HT, uh, because the ground wire in here w does become the other half of the antenna, um, and you want that choke uh, to prevent RF from getting into the FE Pi. Um, 
believe, trust me on this one. Um, it gets a little wonky when you start sending RF into that unit. All right, so let's assemble this. Uh, I'll show you the complicated process of attaching a Raspberry Pi Zero to an FE Pi Zero V2 audio board. It's uh, the smash technique. As you can see, I'm just smashing this stuff together. And that's it. That's the complete TNC that you're going to use to for this VHF radio. Um, if you want to get really crazy, you can add this, uh, kind of mess this case all up. Let's see if I can put this in the, in a case. Uh, kind of line up the USB ports. This is always the tricky part. Let's see if I can get this lined up. Oh, I got a satisfying click there. I tuck the rest of that. All right, now we have the TNC Pi here and a radio over there. I'm going to power on this TNC just by applying power. And power has been applied. And there's a little green light on here. It should be, you can see the green light. It's right up by my thumb. It's not blinking now. Yeah, it's blinking a little. Anyways, this, it's booting up. It's booting the Linux operating system. It's just a current version of Raspbian. Um, I installed all kinds of software on this. Um, for, for WinLink, it's Linux RMS. Uh, for all of the VHF packet stuff, it's uh, the program's called Direwolf. Direwolf, that's a pretty spectacular piece of software. It's really the sound modem. And it'll do modems for HF, you know, which is 300 baud, and it'll do modems for VHF, which is 1200 baud. So Direwolf, uh, look into that one. Um, there's a bunch of other, like rig control um, that does, you know, controls your USB rigs and things like that. But for today, we're just going to talk about packet radio on the VHF radio using the signal link, or not signal link, I'm sorry. That's what you, <laughs> that's the expansion version of this using the Raspberry Pi Zero and the FE Pi Audio Hat. That's what you're looking at here. Uh, the radio is currently tuned to APRS, so why don't we go ahead and start with the like an APRS demonstration? Um, I'm going to fire up an Android app called APRS Droid. Um, right now, these things are connected to each other using my access point at home. But if for some reason you're in the field and there is no Wi-Fi available or cell service, uh, you can just turn this on. It'll, it will notice that and it will become a hotspot and you just connect to it kind of as a peer device and you can access it much in the same way that you would. Now, you don't have Internet access, but you have access to it. All right, so let's go. Let's see if it's booted up now. I've, I've been stalling this whole time waiting for this thing to boot. So I can close the camera. I'm going to open the Chromium browser. I am connected to the device. And uh, it's currently called Digipeter 3 on my network. But you can see all of the packet services that are on this device. Um, 1200 baud VHF. That's really just a, a TNC that Direwolf's running. Uh, APRS Digipeter. So if, you wanna, if you're camping or something and you want to put a Digipeter in the truck, this is what I do. Park the tr truck up on a hill and go fishing down at the river. And the truck is a packet Digipeter. So you can do messaging and positioning and all that stuff. Uh, it has a 300 baud TNC, but that's for HF. Uh, see my other video for that. Um, you can be a VHF WinLink gateway, which is pretty cool. You can actually be an email gateway. This will, will turn into that. Um, the Pat WinLink client, that's basically uh, kind of like, I hate to say this, like your Microsoft Outlook interface as inbox, outbooks, outbox. You can compose, send, and receive. That's what Pat does. Um, an R.Modem modem is a modem used for uh, HF. Frequencies, we're not going to use that here. And then rig control, we're not going to use because we don't have a radio that we can control over USB. We just have this Yaesu FTM 400. And we're going to use this uh, the cable uh, that I just plugged into it that has the push to talk, audio in, audio out. All right, so right now it is a, what is it? I'm going to refresh it to see what the system status is at the bottom. And right now it's an APRS Digipeter. That's what it comes up as boot. So I'm going to, I'm going to press the off button in the upper Turn off the Digipeter. Hopefully I did it here. You can press them as much as you want. I think I pressed off there. I pressed it that time. And it's shutting down the APRS Digipeter service. Yeah, it's been Digipeting this whole time. Um, and I'm going to turn, let's, what do I want to do? I just want to make a 1200 baud TNC so we can use uh, APRS Droid to send our position and maybe do some messaging. So I'm going to press the on button at the top there. That comes out in the video. Yep, there it goes. And we're going to watch the system status down at the bottom. And the TNC 1200 baud VHS should become active. And it is. So now we have a 1200 baud TNC. We have a radio that's tuned to 144.390. So we can do APRS packet radio. Let's fire up uh, APRS droid. And see if we can actually send packet. This is, the, uh, this is what everything looks like right now. Um, 
kind of waiting for the uh, oh actually i need to connect this little cable is connects the push to talk audio signals to the fe pi audio hat that's on the raspberry pi now if we're lucky we'll see an aprs packet come in and we'll see the led light up and we did this little led here that means there's a carrier detected by direwolf again that's totally optional and only if you got a lot of spare time and soldering skills all right so let's go to aprs droid and see if this actually works aprs droid i'm going to stop tracking because I don't know, I'm not sure why it was tracking. I'm going to click start tracking. Um, and if for some miracle this Android device gets a GPS lock, um, it will actually send my position out over the APRS network. Um, but I don't, you know, the positioning is cool. A lot of people say APRS is dead because who wants to watch someone drive back and forth to work all day on the APRS network? What I like about it is messaging. I mean, you can do email and SMS texting, right? I think I went over that in considerable detail in my last message. So in the upper right corner, you'll see a little airplane, a little triangular airplane. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to send a message to, to somebody. Um, let me Actually, I'm going to clear this conversation. Um, what do I want to do? So I want to send a message to station KM6LYW-9. You'll see that in the upper left. That's a virtual radio I created. That's up there running all the time. In fact, you can use this if you're on APRS. Um, it has lots of cool functions. You'll send it keywords and stuff. Uh, one of the cool things I like to use it for is just to get the weather. Um, I'm just going to send it a message of W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And it looks like it's USB keyboard. Let me try that again. W-E-A-T-H-E-R. That's just kind of message of weather. I'm going to hit return. And now that what you can't see is the radio is making noise and, and clicking and sending packets. And at some point, as you can see there, I just got the weather back uh, from my virtual radio called KM6LYW-9. And it's uh, 55 outside. Going to be 66 today. Mostly sunny today. Tonight's going to be partly cloudy. So that's kind of cool. Um, there's other commands this radio does too, like locate. Um, I'm just going to type locate. And it's going to tell me my position. Or I can type locate and some other call sign, and it'll tell me pretty much where that guy is. And this is actually happening uh, using the radio here, um, which is making a horrible amount of noise. I'm going to turn it down. So there's my position. Now you know where I am, eight miles east of Auburn. Um, and how long ago my packet was sent. So this would be great, like for, you know, a search and rescue situation. You know exactly where someone is. Um, and if all you have is an APRS radio, you'd know where to find them. Um, it does add some other features too. Um, APRSD is the software running on this virtual radio. And that's on my GitHub account, APRSD. And it'll respond to lots of cool commands. So anyways, we did, we did our packet radio. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I am going to go back to the camera here. We probably won't see it transmit, will we? But we're not actually sending packets right now. But anyways, it was spectacular while I was talking to that other screen. You know, the radio actually had a red bar here. It was transmitting and having a good time. So that was APRS packet radio. Now we can do like BPQ, you know, BBS packet um, using uh, SSH shell into this thing. I've done that before. I'm not really big into the bulletin boards. Today we're just doing APRS packet. Um, so let's, I don't know, let's do, uh, let's do like WinLink. So let's reconfigure this thing and make it a WinLink server. So we open up a website called Digipeter3. And right now we can see it's a 1200 baud TNC. I'm going to turn that TNC off by pressing the off button up here. All right. And we wait. All right, now all of the services are inactive on the device. I'm going to uh, click on the VHF WinLink gateway even though we're just sending. I'm going to press the on button there. Wait for that to become active. I shouldn't even have to wait. Um, it's just kind of cool to see them change. Put a refresh button there in case it needs to be refreshing. Okay, the VHF WinLink gateway is active. I'm also going to turn on the PAC client. The PAC client is kind of your, uh, like, I hate to say it like this, like your Microsoft Outlook. Uh, it has inbox, outbox, send, receive. Um, so PATS is, is loaded. So I'm going to launch. I'm going to click on PAC client down at the bottom there and actually launch the PAC client. And you'll see a traditional mailbox type of interface. Uh, last time we saw the mobile device version of this, which is kind of compressed and, and hard to use. But since we're using a real tablet here, um, we can actually it's a, it's a lot easier to use, and you'll be able to, to read it. Um, also on the radio, I'm going to switch over to a WinLink frequency. You know, let me just do that right now just for 
to exemplify. So right now it's on APRS. Um, I'm going to switch it over to uh, 145050. Uh, this is a, the frequency uh, that this sits on when it's a WinLink server. Um, right now it's just, uh, well, actually it is a WinLink server, but we're going to use it as a WinLink client through, through PAT. So you can see the radio is on 145050. And this is going to start transmitting and receiving uh, there. And I'm going to connect to another WinLink server and see if I can send or receive an email. Uh, let's close the camera and get back to Pat. Uh, this is a website that's actually running on the, the little uh, TNC. Uh, so what do we want to do today? I could check email. Or I could send email. Um, I can go up to the top. There's this action thing. I can say connect. I'm going to check my email. What's going to happen? I'm going to have a really long email. Um, I'm going to use a, one of these VHF guys. Uh, they're down here in the AB section. There's a guy up in Grass Valley. He's about 60 miles away on Banner Mountain. KF6DQU-10. I'm just going to connect to him and check my email. Um, so I'm going to press connect. I'm going to turn the volume up so you can hear some packets happening. You'll hear him talking back, but you won't hear me transmitting out. At the bottom, you'll see it's connecting to KF6DQU-10. And now it says connected to KO6DQU-10 over AX.25. And this is actually using AX.25 in the Linux kernel. Uh, that's him responding. That was me transmitting. I don't know if you can hear the transmitter click. You know, while, while, while we're watching this, if you do set up a packet station, um, if your radio has a relay or a fan, um, it's probably not going to last very long as a packet radio. Uh, get something like a Yaesu 2980. Um, it's totally solid state. It can do packet all day. So anyways, this guy is, uh, I'm checking, FF I think means check for any email waiting for my call sign. That's pretty much your login is your call sign. Remember, there's no encryption on the radio, so don't think that this is secure in any way. This is just for, uh, you know, what the FCC would call uh, 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 conversations of a personal nature. You know, no pecuniary interests. Um, so someone's sending me an email uh, that says, hey, um, Hopefully this is isn't obscene or something. I don't. I don't know. Sometimes you have you have to tell the people you're <laughs> um, talking with over HF if they're not ham radio operators to make sure that their content is consistent with the uh, or illegal for the the jurisdiction of of wherever you're operating your radio, uh, including the, the United States. Um, so the packets are going back and forth. Actually, while this is downloading, um, I could probably show you. What's going on on the radio? That was a huge packet that just came in, and I'm sending an acknowledgement. Another packet's coming in. I'm sending an acknowledgement. We're watching this guy over here. Or if you want, you can see the the light. It lights up every time there is a carrier. Transmit, receive. That was a long one. I bet you I probably got a huge landslide of email here. And, you know, this is 1,200 baud, right? So at 56K, that was when we stopped using modems way back in the day. This is 1,200 uh, baud. Um, yeah, I'm getting a huge email here. It's 7% it's downloaded. We have, like, a weekly net. Um, actually, you can see it actually transferring right now to give you an idea how slow this is. So we have a weekly net, and you might want to do this in your community where you can have just everyone check in with a one-liner. It says what your call sign is, the software you use to connect, how you connected. Because you, know, you can go through digital repeaters, too. Uh, they call them, um, well, digipeaters, I guess, is the, is the best way to, to say it. I'm going to turn the, the packet noise down. Um, so you can get an idea how slow this is. Some packets are long, some are short. Um, I honestly don't know how the protocol works, you know, when it comes to graceful degradation. The HF stuff degrades very naturally. Um, it'll change protocols, the packet window size, um, and I, it, I don't know if it has forward error correction. Most of these don't, but they definitely have a terminal control uh, procedure. Uh, with, with acknowledgments and CRCs. Um, so you'll always get good data. It, you might be slow data, but it'll definitely be good. And, and remember, I'm connected to a server. I'm in uh, like Auburn, California. I'm connected to a server probably 45, 50 miles north of here. Um, I'm on medium power and I'm using a, a roll-up J-pole that's sticking out of the roof right above me. So you see, I just got my uh, WinLink uh, net report. Just came down, what are we at, 96%. 
I know I'm still transmitting, so I'm probably sending acknowledgments back. Uh, what else we got? Um, also, this will do texting. Like if you send, like most cell phones will have like a phone number at vtext.com, for example, for Verizon, and it'll actually go through as an SMS message, which is cool. All right, so as you can see, my email just came in. Um, you guys are now reading all of my email. Um, you don't. Hopefully, there's nothing uh, super <laughs> sensitive there. Um, so I'm just going to look at the NorCal WinLink weekly report to see who logged in. And I apologize if I'm showing your sauce call sign, but this is these are a lot of the local guys who checked into the WinLink net. Pretty cool, huh? And I just received all this to give you an idea of how much email I just received over those what, last two minutes at 1,200 baud. This is it. And you can actually do attachments and stuff, too. Um, just for completeness, I can send them an email. So I can do compose. I can do a call sign or an actual email address. Um, I'm not going to share my actual email address if that's okay with you guys. Um, so I'm just going to put my call sign, KM6LYW. And let's see if the tab key works. Yeah, that's cool. I'm using a USB keyboard. Uh, test message. And then I'm going to, for the body, I'm going to say this. is the body here of course you got have exclamation points and i'm gonna say egg all right and that's it now i just composed a message now i want to post it let me turn down the radio because man it's obnoxious all right so if you go to your outbox you can see there's there's a message i just composed and i can do action i'm going to connect to the same guy again kf6 dqu and this time I'm going to send that email. We're going to see how, what that looks like. So we're watching the bottom there. You can actually see the log. It says I'm connecting. Um, I'm going to turn up the volume just a little bit. You're going to hear him, but you won't hear me. Um, some WinLink gateways don't like you to hammer them. Uh, like over and over. I don't know if this is one of those guys. Um, or he might have another user, right? AX.25 is multi-user. Uh, so he might be talking to some other people, and I'm just kind of waiting. Um, all right, it says connected to KF6DQU. So we have negotiated a connection. Uh, you'll see at the top it says connected via AX.25. And I'm logging into his server again. You just saw all this. We're just doing it again, except this time instead of receiving email, it's gonna actually, it should send that email that's sitting in my outbox right now, um, if we're lucky. Um, Let's see, last time I showed you the radios sending packets back and forth. Maybe we can show a complete transaction in that log window. I'm transmitting. Uh, I'm sending my checksum for my message. Again, I'm about half power here. But I think it looks pretty reliable. Um, not all packets are getting through, obviously, um, because that's why it's taking a little while. And we're hearing packets going back and forth, uh, and we're not seeing progress in the log necessarily. I'm actually going to kick up to uh, high power on the radio. Uh, that's 50 watts on this guy. I don't know, VHF changes from time to die, time throughout the day. And the reason I'm kicking up the power here really is because I'm transmitting a message. So I'm doing a lot more transmitting than receiving. Um, actually, you know, I have to send the checksum, the actual contents of the mail. WinLink does have compression, um, which is cool. Uh, it actually is what well, you can send images. I've done that before. I've been out in the field and I'll take a picture or something uh, using this device here and I can send it um, to my wife or something, right? As a, as a, as an image. Now it, you have to really compress the image. It, you know, it's not high res or anything because again, 1200 baud, right? That's, that's as good as it gets. So this is still sending the checksum back and forth. Now it's transmitting test message. And I'm sure we don't have the best connection. It's usually a little faster. So you're seeing a real-life example of a WinLink connection happening here. And it sounds like I've got other people on the channel, too. So there's a little, uh, actually, like a real weak station transmitting packets. So when you, when you select a frequency, it doesn't, you don't have exclusive access to it. There could be bulletin board systems on here. It's a huge collision domain, if you're familiar with networking, at least on the, the physical layer, right, on that single frequency. And, of course, the Raspberry Pi knows when there is a carrier and it won't transmit so it can it does collision detection right that's what's kind of cool about direwolf which is the software running here okay you can see my message was sent that totally worked we are done there 
And yeah, there's other people talking on this frequency, um, as you can see <laughs> on the uh, video camera. Now it's just receiving right now. I'm not actually doing anything. And someone else is doing packet operations on the same frequency, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's a, it's, it's a shareable collision domain. That's what's cool about packet radio. So I think that concludes our uh, video for today. Um, again, I, this my name is Craig Lamparter. Um, this is something I created called DigiPi. Um, this is on GitHub. My GitHub login ID is Craiger L Charlie Romeo Alpha India Golf Echo Romeo Lima. And uh, you can find not this image yet. I haven't made this image. So this is kind of a call to arms. So if anyone who wants to sanitize this image, um, clean up all of my horrible coding practices, um, and then somehow make this image relocatable, like, you know, enter a call sign and then it sprinkles a call sign into all of the configuration files that went into this. That would be cool. That would be my goal. Um, and then, you know, anyone could take this SD card image, burn it to a Raspberry Pi. Um, hopefully you can get that FE Pi hot audio board um, working if you got a little bit of soldering skills. And then you basically have all of these packet radio services on your uh, VHF radio, which uh, doesn't need to have a USB interface. Okay, you guys have a good one. Um, give me some feedback on this. I'm really not a YouTuber, as I'm sure you can tell. Um, I'm just a guy with a tablet and a soldering iron and some spare time, right? That's it. Again, my name is Craig, KM6LYW, and 73, guys.